Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona. It is the Icebreaker Challenge number nine. My name is Dave Vincent, and we have Dave Fink to my right as we have the men's finals now on the air, Dave. Adam Bernhardt coming in from Texas and Abraham Montijo here from Arizona. It's a very good matchup here. Both guys with nice semifinal wins to reach this final. Adam brings a lot of his four wall game to the three wall court. A lot of high drives, overhand serves. Abraham looked as good as I've ever seen him play in his semifinal win against Max Langmack, who's a very tough three wall player. And Abe just dismantled the six foot eight Langmack. Under six in both games, did not see that coming. See that nice little smooth punch right there from Bernhardt? You're gonna see some smooth shots from him that might even blow you away because he is definitely a throwback type player. Just really very nice smooth. start there for Bernie, who defeated Florida's Nick Mattiani in a very close match. 11-6 oh. in the tiebreaker. That was nearly two hours. That was another fun one to watch. That was six all at the tiebreaker, one point. Bernie scores the last five points. I like that little quick snap right there from Bernie with his left. Adam has not played much three wall. He was very excited to get the invitation to play here. So he's really been looking forward to it. Abraham playing in his third icebreaker. That's tied for most of anyone. Abraham took third in the very first icebreaker and sixth in his second start. Adam is making his first icebreaker start. The ball popped up. Adam had a chance at it. I'm sure that that long match with Mattiotti is affecting Bernhardt just a little bit here. Beautiful little left-handed kill shot. Very smooth. That's right. In this sport, fans ask the players what the score is, mm -hmm. and the players actually respond during live play. Well, they don't respond to staff, but they do respond to fans. Bernie had the right idea, just didn't hit it high enough. Well, I think he needed one or two more steps forward there. He was reaching. Usually when you reach, you're going to make mistakes. And that's just making it too easy on the server. You're not going to see a lot of amazing retrieving Dave in three wall because your positioning is going to be a few feet farther back than you would be in four wall and you're also not going to be diving. You have to protect against the deep shot or the ceiling shot so you can't play up around where the dotted line would be, where you would normally be. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Nice shot from Abraham right there. That's a terrible hit there from Barney. When you get a serve off the right side wall to your strong hand, you don't want to be hitting that into the fence. That should be a shot you should either win the rally with or put your opponent in such a bad spot that you get a big setup. Yeah, you'd normally expect at least a driving pass shot down a wall from there. Mm -hmm. You pick the wall. I've heard some people in the crowd comparing Adam Barnhart to Vern Roberts. The smoothness and the patience. Yeah. Oh, nice inside out. Good hustle here from Abraham. My gosh, Dave, he's still going here. Hustle pays off. There's the driving return that you mentioned, Dave. What a shot there from Adam. Yeah, Adam hit that perfect. So it's two perfect shots in a row for Adam. The punch fist return, and then the overhand out the door serve. Well, it just felt like Abraham's been dominating up to this point, and Adam's just a serve away from drawing it within one. And he may have done it. That was out. Mm. Adam serving here at eight to nine. I mean, do you have that feel that Abraham's been dominating, or is, does it seem equal to you? Well, Adam started off with an early lead. I think it was 3-0, so Abraham definitely had the momentum up until this comeback from Adam. The crowd likes that spoiler in the left corner. Who doesn't? Another miss hit from Bernhardt. Just looks like Adam could move his feet a little bit more when he's hitting with his left. I think that serve is out. Well, Abe going with the overhand serve, so it must have been. It's tempting to do that overhand splat shot on every single return of serve if you're in that position, but it's not always wise. You can fall in love with it, and it's such a low percentage shot. Somehow, Abraham's still keeping this rally going, and he misses that one. Bernhardt does a little bit of damage and gets a point on the scoreboard, the damage being that he's running Abraham around in the sun. It feels like Abe's doing a lot more running. But Adam's controlling the front court. But Abe has the lead. Now just building some camaraderie here.
like you said, Adam's just a little late with his feet here. Now, I know you're talking about his left hand, but same could be said there with his right. A little too nonchalant. And I think it's because he's either cramping or this, this heat has gotten to him. Because I don't, I've never seen Adam this slow out of the gate on return of serves or even on first strikes. I remember the first time I saw Adam play was back in Modesto, California at a pro stop up against John Bike, and Adam was diving all over the court. We just don't see that Adam anymore. His game has completely changed from those early days. Well, a lot of times when you're playing against the top pro for the first time, you become a different person. There's a different kind of intensity and desire. And also a desperation well, that comes yeah. with playing a, a top pro, knowing that if I don't dive and go for everything, I might not score and that at top, all. That top pro was Joan Vike. Well, yeah. So, of John course, you're going to... You know, and Adam's a student of the game, and that's another nice little shot from Bernhardt and a pickup from Abraham, who was unable to get a hand on that one. But Adam's a student of the game, so he knew what type of player John Bike was in the past. And even at that moment, John Bike was still a good player. And so he was trying to hustle like John Bike did. Well, I can remember playing John Bike when he was number one. And I felt like if I didn't dive and play as hard as I could for every shot, I might not score. I think this was about 2006, 2005. Mm -hmm. Watch those guys play. And John was still great back then. Right, John qualified at the first race stop in 2011. He qualified again at 46 a couple years later. Looked like a mishit from Bernhardt. Abraham's wasn't. Fade away first strike kill from Abe in the right corner. Abe has a very good serve out here. A lot of velocity. He's able to locate it well close to the back line with Hop. If you have power, Dave, there's no reason you shouldn't have a great serve in three ball. Now, he also knows how to sneak it over the short line, too. That right. That was another great serve. Huge natural out the door it's almost like a slider right dave a slider is a, like a power breaking ball yeah like a fastball that breaks into the dirt Nobody should be hitting a slider. And if you are hitting one, then it wasn't thrown right. Adam, with a 37-foot kill in the right corner, earned the side out. That was smart. He inside outs Abraham. This is that. Uh, it was just a little flop, but I think this is what Adam needs to do. He's clearly laboring from the heat, so I believe his first strike needs to be elite. This ball may have broke. Oh, okay. So that's why we saw that kind of swing. But this is what Adam has to do, I think, in this heat, is just to go for a first kill, sh kill shot right after that return from Abraham. But isn't that the strategy in any condition? You would think so, but you don't see it outside a lot and I haven't seen it from Ab from Abraham or Adam Abe a little bit more I guess but see there's Adam's first instinct is go on the roof he should just put it in the right corner he 
teams less kill shots in three wall on average than in four wall. There's just less opportunities with the ball bouncing up around your shoulders or taking fly kills from shoulder height from the 35 foot area. Whereas in four wall, an overhead shot's going to come off the back wall for a setup. Two in a row. It was two quick points right there from Abraham. Well, you mentioned that he can sneak the serve over the short line, and that's what he did there. I did it two times. But I, I agree with you. Abraham's deep serve is about as good as you're going to see in the game. And he does it with a little bit of wrinkle as well. And he also is looking for the fly kill. He's very good with the fly kill off of a good serve. So you know as a returner that you can't just get it back. Is that four aces in a row? Yeah. Wow. And this is the perfect moment for it. From 13 all to 17 without even hitting one rally shot. Yeah, the game was going fairly slow until Abraham just got into the service box. The ball is called long by both players. I like how we instituted fans to help out with calling the score. Not refereeing, but just calling the score. Right. Every single match, they, the fans had it wrong. The score. Not paying attention, talking on their cell phones, call the score, had the wrong score. I mean, up to this point, that is. How difficult is that to be in the sun and then you have to run over and, and hit that ball in the shade? Well, I think Adam wearing sunglasses makes that quite a bit more difficult. Unless the entire court and the front wall is in the sun, I think sunglasses obstruct your sight of the ball pretty dramatically. And there's that 21st point for Abraham. You know, Adam and Abe were both tied at 13. So Abraham comes out and scores eight straight and wins game number one. We're gonna have game number two coming up here next. It's the Icebreaker Challenge number nine in Tucson, Arizona at Clark Park. This is the men's finals between Abraham Montijo and Adam Bernhardt. Abe wins the first one, 21 to 13. Game number two, though, is now. Making his way back onto the court is Abraham. Had some pretty good serves. In fact, it took them 16 minutes to score 26 points, and then it only took, uh, what was it, two minutes for Abraham to score eight to put away Adam there in game number one. And it all started with that serve. We talked about the end of the first game being Adam wearing the sunglasses. Your first instinct when you see the sun is wear the shades, but with the ball being blue, and you can see the court is pretty dark in the shade. I find it very difficult to pick up the ball, particularly the return serve. I think later in the year, you probably do want to wear them. Only when the front wall is also in the sun. Right. I just think wearing those sunglasses and then going into the shade from the sun yes. must just be brutal. I'm trying to, trying to locate that ball. So Abe on a pretty substantial scoring run here. Ended the first game on an 8-0 to zero run. Now he's got at least two here.
for a guy that hasn't played much three wall, Adam certainly knows exactly what to do when the ball goes out the back door. He just runs right over to that shade and waits. I've rarely seen a good four wall player not adapt quickly to three wall. I think we may make a bigger deal about making that transition than there really is. Maybe so. But there are differences that you have to learn. I know a good player kind of learns them on the fly. But it didn't take long for Adam to know that going after that ball that's uh, into this stance, you just go wait in the shade. Mm -hmm. I find three wall to be a lot less tiring than four wall. No diving, no arguing because of the camaraderie. Both those are two of the most tiring things you can do. And then you've got this time in between points where you're looking for the ball. That can be 30 to 45 seconds pretty frequently. And that's really all you need. Four wall, you're never going to have more than 10 seconds between points. Generally, it's going to be more like four or five. So your heart rate never really goes down. Whereas here, you've got balls on the golf course and under the bleachers, 100 yards behind the court. That gives you a lot of time to rest. You see Adam not happy with himself here. You've also got the sun, though, of course, Dave, in three wall. But some of these indoor courts, they get very stuffy, very hard to breathe. The air gets thick. Here, the air is very clean. In fact, Dave, Tucson has some of the cleanest air in the country, right? Does it? So if, there's not a, if there's not a fire, then yeah, we have clean air. Yeah. We have the bluest skies that I've ever seen. Right. I can tell you that. And usually that's an indicator that air quality is pretty good. It seems like every ball right now is being gathered by the back fence after every single rally. Yeah, and that's what I mentioned. That's a long time between rallies, time to collect yourself. Yeah, if you're out here playing by yourself and there are no fans, you have a lot of breaks. And the fans trying to catch the ball and dropping it every time adds more time. 12 13 to 0 is the score here. Game number two. Montijo has a chance to put a zero on Adam Bernhardt here in the men's final. And there's a timeout from Adam. It's the Icebreaker Challenge in Tucson, Arizona. Icebreaker number nine. We've held nine of these tournaments since the pandemic started, actually since September. 21 straight points here for Abraham dating back to 13-13 in game number one. There's Abe going for that sneaky, just past the short line, ace. That ball just sticks on that left wall. And this is not shaping up to be weekend at Bernie's. Oh, 
You've had many battles with Adam Bernhardt. What makes him so difficult to play? He doesn't give you a lot of opportunities to play offense. He keeps the ball up high. He really forces you to be patient. And you just have to have a, a different mindset that you're going to be playing a lot of longer rounds. Another incredible hop serve right there from Montijo. Abraham has a real fast pace, doesn't he? I mean, he gets that ball and he wants to serve it immediately. I think that's true of most of the pro players, particularly when you're on a big run like he is. 24 straight points. Now Adam's going for a sidearm serve here. We've not seen much of this today from Adam. Well, maybe we should have. There was a first point, one to 17. that Spider-Man retrieved quite a bit, jumping up with one foot on the side wall. Seems like we saw Adam come alive a little bit there. But I bet you that took a lot out of him, going back and forth. It's good to see the fans respect the cameras. Well, it's an extra five, two seconds to walk behind them. So you can understand they're in a hurry. Another great serve from Abraham. See how he pushes that ball away. That's the kind of serve where even if you know it's coming, he told you it was coming, it's still very difficult to return. That's more in the middle of the court. Adam hits a nice return there. Another miss up to the roof for Bernhardt. Abraham Montijo here, serving to take the match and the win and the yellow hypothetical jersey. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he does it right there with that amazing, what looks like kill shot serve, winning game number two, 21 to two, and taking the icebreaker number nine. Abraham Montijo is the victor here, here at Clark Park. With the world players of handball, they think taking his headset off, running out there, getting pictures really quickly with Adam Bernhardt and Abraham Montijo. We're going to say goodbye for now. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have more of these tournaments at WPHalive.tv. If you want to get involved, contact us at info at WPHalive.tv. That's info at WPHalive.tv. Congratulations once again to Abraham Montijo.